Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Northwest Leicestershire series. There's 31 parishes here based around the towns of Colville and Ashby de la Zouch. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to Northwest Leicestershire, everybody. Now, today I've brought you to a place which has a magnificent viewpoint right next to its church. That is the view that I've got from outside the church here. It's magnificent and it's right on top of a hill. In fact, the name of this place even means hill. In fact, if you break it down, it means hill, hill on the hill. It's Breeden on the hill. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. For our second foray into northwest Leicestershire in as many months, we've come to Breeden on the Hill, a small village with a crazy amount to talk about. It's located two miles to the south of Leicestershire's border with Derbyshire, and in true Leicestershire fashion, includes two small hamlets as well as the main village, namely Tong and Wilson. The name of the place literally describes the landscape, frighteningly accurately. Breeden means hill hill, as both Bree and Don are old words for a hill. The fact that on the hill is added onto the end is frankly hilarious because then it means hill hill on the hill so are we to assume there's some high ground here the answer is an emphatic yes Breeden is famous for a massive carboniferous limestone hill that rises 122 meters above sea level in what's otherwise a generally low-lying landscape the result is that anything standing on top of that huge mound is treated to an amazing view across the East Midlands. The hill is the location of Breeden Priory Church, which is built on a former Iron Age hill fort known as the Bulwarks. Underneath, there's an active quarry which produces limestone and gravel. The village also has an unusual war memorial, a village green, a school, and an old lockup known as the Roundhouse, and that's before we've even touched Tong or Wilson. In other words, there's a lot here, so we'd better get cracking. We begin our journey around the parish in Wilson, located to the north of Breeden around half a mile from the Big Hill. Wilson might be a tiny hamlet, but it has a well-known landmark, Breeden Priory Spa, which is located on Green Lane. Established in 2022, the spa has already been recognised as one of the best in the East Midlands, and it has the awards to prove it. It won the Boutique Spa of the Year award earlier this year. Its cheapest package is around £350, but reviewers all love this place. Wilson has no other amenities except for one, a pub called the Bull's Head. That can be found on its main street. Formerly known as the Fox and Hounds, this is one of those pubs which will always have plenty of trade because of what's around it. It's a convenient pub as Wilson sits right next to two major UK landmarks, East Midlands Airport and Donington Park Motor Racing Circuit. Wilson was once owned by the Donington Estate. In a moment, we'll see something connected to Countess Loudon, the wife of Lord Donington. 
The village centre is marked by a phone box with a defib machine and a plaque that says Wilson has twice been a best kept village. Look to the skies and you'll see how close East Midlands Airport is. Wilson is almost, but not quite, on the flight path. Now we're at a corner at a small triangle where the road bends to the left. We're off to the right though, down Short Hill. This is Brook House, semi-timbered and one of Wilson's oldest, dating back to 1636. It was once the home of William Brooks. Here's Loudon House. This used to be a second pub called the Rat and Ferret before becoming a shop in the early 1930s. Here the road bends to the left and to the right is Dog Lane, a dead end unless you have permission to walk all the way through. Now the health club in Wilson of course is called Breeden Priory which is named after this. We've now come up the hill from Wilson into Breeden and we're about to have a look at Breeden's Priory Church which is over here. Now this is a magnificent place. Let's have a look at it and see what it's all about. We're now on top of the big hill which overlooks Breeden Village. This is Breeden Hill viewpoint where you can see for miles. On top of the hill is Breeden Priory Church. This is an ancient site of Christian worship with a history going back to 676 AD. It was then that a monastery was founded on the site of an Iron Age hill fort, known locally as the Bulwarks. It was then refounded in the 12th century as an Augustinian priory. This is the Priory Church dedicated to St Mary and St Hardolf. Several graves in the churchyard belong to the Mason and the Frain families, two major names locally. Also on the hill is an iron beacon. This has been lit five times, the first of which was in 2002 for the Queen's Golden Jubilee. Below us here is an active quarry owned by the Breeden Group. Beyond this wall, it's a sheer drop into the cavernous pit below. So let's go into the church. This is a grade one listed building and nationally important for its exceptional architectural interest. It's got a sundial on its wall close to the main entrance, Anglo-Saxon carvings on its interior walls and three bells in its tower. The dedication to St Hardolf is unusual. This is a royal church and it's the only one in the country which bears his name. So who was he? Well, these mega important cross fragments give us a clue. Historians know St Hardolf by a different name, Erdwulf. He was the king of Northumbria between 790 and 830 AD. Little is known about his death, but most believe he was buried in this church. In one corner of the church is a chapel set aside for the burial of the Earl of Ferrers, Francis Shirley and his family. They were important to Breeden historically as it's this family who purchased the manor from Henry VIII after the dissolution of the monasteries. So we've just come inside of course, Nikki made a Mrs. TVI episode about this very church. If you haven't seen it, it's linked in the description below and it's also in today's end screen. Here's a short excerpt from that video. Enjoy. We've got a small kitchen area, a local map. Some gold work embroidery here, which is definitely up my street. That's beautiful. We've got lots of memorials on the walls. A red carpet. Font here. I think I've found a war memorial, Andy. Have you? Yeah. As we go around here. List of vicars, priors, patrons, church wardens. And some stonework here as well. More memorials up on the wall. This is really, it's truly beautiful. I don't know, let's have a look. Can we get up there? Yeah, it's 
So here's a war memorial for both world wars. Men of Breeden who gave their lives. The family tomb in here, and about look of things. So the Lady Chapel. And then here, some beautiful stained glass. Now, I'm sure that somewhere there'll be some information about this, but a family tomb in here with effigies on top. Let me just put my camera in. There's a plaque there on the wall, so I'm going to go have a look. Huge tomb that. Let's go back up the aisle and see if we can't get across and go take a look. Would it be through here? Yes, it would. There's another little private chapel there. So, in memory of, hold on. Robert, late Earl Ferrers, who died 1787, and Catherine, Countess Ferrers. So there we go. So it looks like it's the Ferrers family vault. And then, what have we got in here, Andy? Down there, the same. No, no, in here. Uh, no, it's not like been, a little I've chapel. I've not been in there yet. Little private chapel. So some of the old pews. I don't quite like walking on the floor in here because it's a bit wibbly wobbly. But there we go. Our main walk begins on Hollow Road, a narrow lane which sits at the foot of Breeden Hill, lined with a lovely elevated terraced row. Many of the houses here are built from stone that came from Breeden Quarry. Extraction from it began many centuries ago. The end of the lane brings us to Melbourne Road and to the first of four pubs, only two of which are still in business. This is the Hollybush, which is a proper old worldy venue with low ceilings and beautiful black and white timbers. On the wall outside is a parish notice board. Mark Breeden on the Hill off the list, there's 26 to go in North West Leicestershire. Melbourne Road then starts to open up as it approaches the village green, which is kept neat, tidy and welcoming for everyone. Check out these flowers looking fabulous in the September sunshine. It's great when the residents of a place make the effort in this way. The Green is a pleasant centre spot and a popular meeting place. It has a few benches to sit on and you can also get a bus here. Breeden is served by the number 125 which runs between Castle Donnington and Leicester via the nearby town of Colville. Next to that stop is the Parish Hall. This was built by Cameron Holmes and was completed earlier this year at a cost of half a million pounds. Now behind the parish hall, there's a lot of new build housing, as you can see here. A lot of this is yet to be marked on the map, in fact. So if you look at Google Maps, you might not see these streets, not yet anyway. They will be put on eventually. There's always a little delay between them being built and uh, being marked on any maps. But yeah, there's some new build housing just there. This is an interesting part of the village actually, because obviously you've got the parish hall there, you've got this new build housing. And then if you look this way, you've got the green and you can see the hill there, which is where the church is up there is the Priory Church we've just been to. And then, and then at the bottom of the hill, you have this 
amazing little structure. This little round house on the green. That's the next thing to talk about. Taking pride of place on the village green is Breeden's War Memorial. It's built of Breeden stone from the local quarry. Its circular design is unusual. It originally had a low outer wall as well as the main tower, but that was removed in 1956. It was unveiled by the Countess of Loudoun on November the 28th, 1921. Remembrance services are held here every year. All of that and so much more can be read on this fantastic history board, also on the village green. This covers Tong and Wilson too. There's far more on this board than I can fit into one video, but this part about the lockup and the old school proved very informative. Now we're off down Main Street for a short way. Breeden has a lot of white houses for some reason, like this one in your shot right now. Now keep this house on the left near the green in mind. At the end of this walk, I'll be showing you something to do with it. This house is an old chapel, but that's as much as I can tell you about it. I do know the Wesleyans had two locally, one in Wilson and one in Tong. We continue down Main Street as we head for what is the village centre. The road has suddenly become a lot wider. Here's Breeden's phone box, and in much the same way as in Wilson, this one has no phone, just a defib machine. OK, we've reached the end of Cross Street, which is the one you can see just opposite the camera right here. You can see there's a, a house here with a big window facing the road. Somewhere close to, the, to this point here, there was a butcher shop until 2017, but that's now closed down. I think it's in this little courtyard here. We'll wander across and we'll see if we can find the remnants of it. The butcher shop, SL Fisher, was located in this courtyard. It was very popular for its steak and Stilton pies, but alas, it's now gone. Now we're heading for the second of the four pubs, but this one is no longer in business. It was called the Lime Kiln. This is located next to the semi-timbered barns of Lime's Farm. It closed in 1998, but still retains its pub sign on its roof. Now we're going down Worthington Lane. Worthington is an adjacent village, albeit on the other side of the A42. This road is wholly residential these days, but a quick look at some of the property up here tells you that wasn't always the case. I reckon that last one could well have been another former pub at one time. This one gave me that impression too, but to a lesser extent. This little building opposite though was 100% the former blacksmith shop. All of these properties are now private houses. Okay, now we're following a footpath which runs between um, the street we've just been on and Doctor's Lane, which will take us around the back of Breeden's School and then up towards the shop. I'm not expecting a great amount from this part of the walk, to be honest with you, because um, this is pretty much all you can see, just the, the path and a few trees and not much else. Obviously, you've got a, a view across to the left of some houses, but uh, really, there's not much to write home about on this part of the route. So in a moment, our next landmark should be the school when I eventually reach it. I was actually getting ahead of myself because it's Breeden Quarry before the school. There's more frames for you here in the form of frame gardens. At the end of Doctor's Lane is the impressive Tatwing Court, a block of eight flats. On the other side of the road is Manor Farm. I couldn't find much about this, but part of it is an old creamery. Amongst its buildings, it still has its former chimney. If we turn right here, we're heading down to Breeden Quarry and also towards an old school close to its entrance. This old school was originally for girls only and it was erected in 1874 by Charles Abney Hastings. 
Following the closure of the boys' school, which was on the hill, this would cater for both sexes until the 1960s, when it was replaced by a new one. So here we have Breeden Quarry, which is owned by the Breeden Group, whose current chairman is the son-in-law of the billionaire steel magnate Lakshmi Mittal. Stone has been quarried here since the late 1800s. Today it produces bulk and packed cement, in addition to crushed rock, sand and gravel. On the other side of its entrance is an archway with battlemented turrets. I think it's just an entrance to a house, but it's pretty cool. So there you go, now you know where all those vans and lorries that say the word Breeden on them all come from. They come from right here, Breeden on the hill. I'm sure you've seen them all flying down the motorway uh, between here and God knows where else. Right, the last section of this walk will take us past the shop and the post office and past the old village lockup towards Breeden Hall. Breeden's only shop is located right in front of the quarry offices on Main Street. This also doubles as the post office. Now it's Breeden's current school. Named St Hardolf's after Erdwolf, this replaced the old school near the quarry in 1962. On the left after the school is a brand new area of housing, the Dovecote, before we encounter a house that used to be the third pub. This was the Hastings Arms years ago before it became the popular Breeden Cafe, which closed down in 1973. Next is the fourth and final pub. This is the Three Horseshoes, a former coaching inn which was originally a farrier's, hence the name. Built over 250 years ago, it was refurbished in 2004, and according to Wapub, it has an on-site farm shop and a chocolate workshop. Opposite the pub is the roundhouse, which resembles a witch's hat. This was the old village lockup, and it was ideally placed. It was used to detain rogues and drunkards before they were carted off to jail. It was open too, so let's go inside. I wonder how many inebriated souls must have stumbled out of the pub opposite and found themselves in this before now. Next to it is a lockup of a different kind, the old village pinfold. This has now been turned into the Breeden Herb Garden. How can there be so much stuff in one small piece of Leicestershire? It's unreal how much Breeden on the Hill has. And one thing I would have loved to have filmed here to add to all of that stuff is Breeden Hall. This is the entrance to it, but of course it is private property, so I can't go in there and show you exactly what's down there. I can, however, give you today's special section all about it. Breeden Hall is a house of significant historical interest. It's made of brick, but originally it was very different. In 1620, it was a small, timber-framed cottage. Soon after, it was bought by the Curzon family and was successively enlarged until 1777, when it was given a new Georgian front. It was the ancestral home of the Curzons for over three centuries before being bought by the Shields family. We'll be talking more at length about the Curzons as we make our way deeper into Amber Valley. Today, the hall is owned by Charles and Charlotte Maynell, and it's been turned into a bed and breakfast type hotel. This is popular with bridal parties who often book out the entire house, taking advantage of the privacy and intimacy afforded by the hall's big, imposing outer walls. It also has Maynell Muse, a set of self-catering cottages renovated from the hall's former stable block. It's all a far cry from what would have been on this site in the 1600s, but Breeden wouldn't be Breeden without it. And here I am back at the car where I find Nikki sitting pretty. Hello. Are you okay? I was going to do a rude gesture though when you said sitting pretty. Well, you are sitting pretty. <laughs> sitting. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Oh, have you? Yes. Because on the walk around earlier, I found this little roadside stall. Oh, yeah. It was called Victoria's Wood. Uh -huh. And they sell little trinkets and bracelets and key rings and things. Uh -huh. And I bought you this. Oh, how sweet is that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know, I'm a soppy old git, aren't I? <laughs> it was only, it was a pound. It doesn't matter how much it was, I didn't ask that. It's <laughs> lovely. So basically, um, shout out for Victoria's Wood. You'll, you'll find it on the corner where 
uh, the war memorial is. Um, there's a house, a white house on the corner that has the stall outside with little honesty box and you can pay by PayPal as well apparently but uh, no need for that because I had some change on me so. Very cute, I like that, thank you. You're very very welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's uh, that's Nikki happy for the rest of the day. Awesome. Now to uh, don't cost a lot, me. <laughs> I know. To finish this video off, we also need to cover the village of Tong, but that's going to be a simple drive-through job as we head out of Leicestershire towards the next one. So yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed breeding on the hill. I know I have. Tong is where we encounter Breeden's railway history. It lies in a valley created by the Ramsley Brook, a tributary of the River Trent. It's always been an agricultural settlement historically, but after a decline in agricultural activity, most of its farms have now been converted into houses. The most notable would be Tong Hall Farmhouse, which dates back to the 17th century, and Brookside Farmhouse, which stands on the site of a working watermill. Tong had a railway line, the route of which passes right through the middle of the place, splitting it in half. The line connected Melbourne to Ashby de la Zouch, and it was built in 1874. It's now become the Cloud Trail, a walking and cycling route, and the only clue to the former railway's existence is the road bridge over the former line, which links both sides of the village together. Tong's only pub, the Lord Nelson, was partially demolished by the line's construction. Both Tong and Wilson had stations on this line, but no trains have passed through here since the early 1960s. Time for us to pass through though and move on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon somewhere else in North West Leicestershire. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>